Baruch Haba to Jerusalem. Follow along as we explore this ancient city, which is the heart of Israel and home to sacred sites of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. If you love travel videos, please consider hitting that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on my future adventures. Our first stop was the Mahin Yehuda Market, also known as the Shuk. This is an outdoor marketplace that is always bustling and a must visit when you're in Jerusalem. Alright, we're in the Mahin, Mah Mahin Yehuda Market. This place is crazy. It's sh Shabbat tonight and Shabbat on Sunday, so people are running around like mad trying to get enough provisions for three days because everything is going to shut down. So it's a little nutty today. Here you can find anything from fresh produce, sweets, jewelry, handmade goods, and much more. Gotta pause for one second and shout out this awesome chick. Her name is Anna and she coordinated our entire Israel trip. For more info on how you can get a tailor-made Israel trip customized to your interests, head to my description box below. I love visiting the Shuk because it's always full of life and definitely a great place to people watch and taste all the flavors of Israel. Truth be told, we're in search of hangover food because we drank way too much ouzo last night. So, oh. For lunch, we popped into Azura, which is a great stop for a bite in the Shuk. My name is Ubi. And what is the name of this restaurant? Azura. Uh, my grandpa opened this restaurant in uh, 1952 here in the market in Jerusalem. Here. And today we will eat our family. The fare is hearty and home cooked. It's a no frills place, but every bite is so delicious, and you will leave satisfied for sure. Not only can you find local flavors in the Shook, but international ones as well. We visited this awesome French cheese shop and got to do a little cheese tasting. Getting some cheeses. I like cheese. <laughs> cheese in here, you should. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll say that because it's ranked as number one in Israel as a cheese store, but also one of the five best cheese stores in the world. And see right here, very special old cheese. So if you like you know, good wine, red wine, yeah, this yes. will be very good next to that one. Guys in Holland will call it Chauda, not Gouda. Chauda. Right? I can't say good. <laughs> Open your hand. Hold on, you're good. Yes. You, you look German. I look German. <laughs> We're all small. We're sisters. For real? If you would believe it, I don't know. We don't look alike, but. I'm Celine, I'm Jennifer Lopez and uh, Celine Dion. Anyone that calls me Jennifer Lopez is okay in my book. Maybe it was a gimmick because I definitely bought his tea and he made a sale. Oh, hi, Mom. Hi, hi Jessica. <laughs> Welcome to Jerusalem. <laughs> I hope you love your accommodations. Yes, they'll, yeah, they'll do quite nicely. So this have... this mirror is going to be great for, you know, outfit photos. Hi. Yeah. And... <laughs> okay, my mom is going to be hosting this room tour. Oh, check out. So we have a divider for the room so that when it kind of opens and closes, and there's a little TV on the side of the divider. Mr. and side. Mrs. Christina and Jessica Moore. <laughs> Here is the view. You can see the old city over there. And there's the pool. Then, of course, we have the Nespresso. Well, we just checked into our room at the David Citadel Hotel here in Jerusalem. We stayed here last year. This hotel is so beautiful. And the guy just came to the door and bought us these cherry chocolates. And, of course, I've already made my Nespresso because they have Nespresso machines. 
in the rooms here and that is life. All right, it is Shabbat, so now the sun's going down and the city is so quiet. Not very many people out. When visiting Jerusalem, it's important to know that on Shabbat, many businesses will shut down to observe the day of rest, which starts on Friday at sundown and ends Saturday at sundown. However, you'll find some restaurants still open. You just need to do a little research. The kitty is waiting for me to drop some seafood, but I'm not going to, but you're so cute. Jerusalem fried chicken. KFC knockoff much? going out to find a bar and we're all directionally challenged. <laughs> Can't figure out where we're going. I think we have to turn left here. Are we going the right way? Where's the bar? Maybe this way. This way? Yeah. Over here? Believe it or not, you can find some awesome nightlife in Jerusalem, even on Shabbat. This is Gatsby's Cocktail Room, a really cool speakeasy that will make you feel like you stepped back in time. All the cocktails we tried here were so delicious and super inventive. I love trying mixology bars when I travel and this one has to be one of my favorites. Normally I don't eat breakfast, but in Israel I never miss it. The breakfast spread at the David Citadel never disappoints. When we were visiting Jerusalem, it was extremely hot. So if you are visiting during the summer, it's very important to stay hydrated. We wandered into the old city, which was built by the Ottomans in the 1500s. These winding narrow streets house tons of vendors selling all kinds of goods. So you're sure to find a souvenir or two in here. So this is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. This is where some people think Jesus was buried. It's a very old church. We came last time we were in Jerusalem, but it was early in the morning and there was no one here. But I think we're going to try to take a look, even though it's really crowded today. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre is a fascinating church, in my opinion, because it was built around a shrine believed to be both Jesus' crucifixion and burial site. The original church was built by Constantine the Great in 336, burned by the Persians in 614, restored by Modestus around 616, destroyed again by the Caliph al-Hakim bi Amr Allah in 1009, restored by the Byzantine Emperor Constantine IX Monomachus in the 11th century, making it the oldest church I have ever visited. This church has been a site of Christian pilgrimage since then. The architecture is a fascinating complex of different types and styles of structures, and it is a great example of several different phases of medieval architectural styles. I would highly recommend visiting here early in the morning if you can. It is much quieter and peaceful than in the middle of the day. As I said before, it can be hard on Shabbat to find things to do in Jerusalem, but you can visit the Tower of David, which is just near the Jaffa Gate, right outside the Old City. 
Contrary to its name, this is not in fact where King David lived, but got this name as people throughout history mistakenly attributed it to that. This fortress is a combination of structures that was built over time, starting from the Hasmonean rulers over 2,000 years ago, and added to by the Romans, and then later by the Turks. Free guided tours are offered in English with your entrance into the museum. They also have an incredible multimedia light show in the evenings, and occasionally they hold concerts. It's really interesting to explore the grounds and step back in time. wiped out a couple times so hopefully that doesn't happen today. <laughs> Another cool Jerusalem landmark is the Montefiore Windmill. This windmill used to grind flour, but now it's just a fun place to come check out the view and perhaps some coffee or wine. This is Instagram versus reality, folks. <laughs> check out my sister Tina. She makes art wherever she goes and she is so talented. Inside of this windmill, there's actually a small tasting room for the Jerusalem Vineyard Winery, where you can sip and savor wines made nearby and drink a little wine in a historical windmill. Not far from the windmill, you can find the first station, which is an old rail station that has been repurposed into a shopping and dining area. There are all kinds of restaurants, bars, and shops here, and it's a great place that any age group can find something to enjoy. As we were there on Shabbat, you can see it's a bit quiet, but on a normal day, there's a lot more life here. What do you think? Is it good? The last stop that you got to know about is Tabier. This is a non-kosher restaurant that has an incredible menu and an even more incredible wine list. They are also open on Shabbat, which is a plus. Make sure though that you make a reservation. Oh my god, everything is so good.
We even got to chat with Chef Nir Levy for a bit, which was really cool to hear about his inspiration for the menu. That about sums up our time in Jerusalem. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Shalom, y'all.